Hello, Malta. I would like to welcome you to our webinar towards a new paradigm to ensure the protection of human dignity to prevent and eradicate human trafficking. According to UNODC's definition, human trafficking is, I quote, the recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring or receipt of people through force, fraud or deception with the aim of exploiting them for profit, end of quote. Men, women and children of all ages and backgrounds can become victims of this horrendous crime which occurs in every region of the world. The traffickers often use violence or fraudulent employment agencies and make fake promises of education and job opportunities to trick and coerce their victims. 50, 50 million people were living in modern slavery in 2021. According to the latest ILO IOM Walk Free report, Global Estimates of Modern Slavery. Most cases of forced labor, 86%, are found in the private sector. Almost one in eight of all those in forced labor are children, 3.3 million, and more than half of these are in commercial sexual exploitation. Nowadays, we are living in a deregulated market where only the calculation of profits and losses count, people are only numbers to be exploited. Pope Francis bluntly declared, such an economy kills. Tonight, I have the pleasure of being received in Rome, in the San Palazzo, in the Palazzo San Calisto in Rome by Father Baggio, under secretary of the Dicastery for Promoting Integral Human Development. He also directs the migrants and refugee sections. It is a great honor to be here, and I would like to thank Father Baggio for this opportunity. The Migrants and Refugees Section has published several key documents on the problem of the growing fragility of a very large part of the world's population today, including in March 2018, 2019, excuse me, the pastoral orientations on human trafficking. Those are the most valuable source for the formation of all those engaged in the fight for the respect of human dignity and against human trafficking. Sister, Sister Miriam Baike, RGS, presented these guidelines for these orientations in detail uh, at our December 8, 2021 webinar. You will find a link to her video in her handouts. You will also find a link in the handouts to the Migrants and Refugees section website to download the pastoral orientations documents on the topic of migrants and refugees. The backbone of these documents is the teaching on the social doctrine of the Catholic Church, which is to say a reflection on the application of the Gospels for the functioning of human political and economic society with the human person at its center and the whole of the essential relationship with God to keep the balance constantly endangers my false from objectives, a decentering of society towards what the church called idolatries. I quote from the pastoral orientations against trafficking in human beings. Beginning of quote. The role of the church and faith in fighting against false gods. This happens when the deity of money is at the center of an economic system rather than man the human person. Yes, at the center of every social and economic system must be the person, image of God, created to have dominion over the universe. The inversion of values happens when the person is displaced and money becomes the deity. Catholic communities should denounce this false deity. Even more, they should be the yeast within societies by promoting significant changes at the local level towards the integral human development of all. Stakeholders can also do this by establishing an economy of communion." End of quote. It is for that reason that we will focus on the need to build a new economic and social model 
where the human person is at the center, which Pope Francisco calls an economy of care. We now have to reflect on what this economy of care is and how we can achieve it from a Christian perspective. The aim of this intervention tonight is to encourage public and business stakeholders to develop the necessary measures for the protection of human life and dignity. Tonight, we, have, we are very fortunate to welcome two distinguished speakers who are experts in the field. First, Reverend Father Fabio Baggio, uh, Scalabrinian, Under Secretary of the Refugees and Migrant Section of the Discastory for the Promotion of Integral Human Development of the Vatican uh, since the 1st of January 2017. Second, Dr. Andrea Marchesani, External Advisor for the Foreign Affairs Department of the Order of Malta regarding migration, human trafficking issues in the digital world and human rights. He shall speak about the social teaching of the Catholic Church in relation to human being, human trafficking. If you have any questions, you can write them on the question and answer questions section. We will discuss them with our speakers at the end of the webinar. You can also find additional documents in the handout sections. Feel free to download them. Now, I have the great pleasure to give the floor to our first speaker, Reverend Father Fabio Baggio. Thank you, Ambassador, and thank you to, thank to the organizer for this invitation to the Migrants and Refugees Section to share some of the insights and the work that we have been doing since 2017. As you know, the Migrants and Refugees Section is a special section which was a created by Pope Francis just to key, to take care or to cater to migrants, refugees, displaced people and victims, survivors of human trafficking. And as soon as we started our work in the section, we immediately noticed how important it was the fourth group. And it was really in, at the heart of Pope Francis. So allow me to start my presentation, just uh, mentioning some of the uh, contents uh, that I'm going to tackle during the 20 minutes that I'm going to use for this contribution. The first is, what about the migrants and refugees section, the special section within the Vatican is tasked particularly to assist local churches in developing their pastoral work in favor of migrants, refugees, displaced people, and victims of human trafficking. So we are dealing directly with the bishop, with bishop conferences, with Catholic organizations and religious congregations, trying to foster and assist and aid their action toward these groups that I just mentioned. So among the people of concern of a section, as I said, the, um, the victims and survivors of human trafficking have been highlighted by Pope Francis as a very peculiar, particular attention to be paid. And the assistance to the local churches has been explicit, particularly in uh, providing their reflection, aid, pastoral aid, and also assisting them in developing programs and plans towards the, uh, the, uh, the action against the human trafficking, protecting and uh, victims and uh, promoting a sensitivity and a sensibility also for in the, the awareness on the issue. So I will just take all three points. The first point is about the past orientation that we developed in 2018. The second is about the 2019 International Conference on Human Trafficking we held in Sacrofano here in Rome with a, a selection of Catholic partners and then I will just mention something which came out, leaving then Andrea to deepen the reflection about the latest challenges coming from COVID-19 pandemic crisis. So I will start with the past orientation on human trafficking. Uh, well, uh, it has been quite a, a compulsory, I would say, to start our action from the fourth group. We had the first year reflection on the migrants and refugees because of a global compact. 2017, but immediately after we started with the victims and survivors of human trafficking. 
So we produced a document which is inserted in a context uh, which has a pretext and as a text. And I will try to, to take all the three points. So about the context, well, it is known by everybody that Human trafficking is a, is a, has a growing importance in the migration phenomenon. So whenever we are taking migrants, refugees, we also to see what, what is a, the most problematic page of their story, which is human trafficking. And we have to consider that it's mushrooming and it is a growing everywhere in the world. It is one of the three target groups of the migrants, refugee section, as I said, very important to tackle them. And then, we realized that there were no magisterial document ex professor dealing directly with human trafficking. I mean, many, many quotes, many declarations, many statements on human trafficking within other documents, but a document dealing with human trafficking was not produced, produced by the magisterium. But Pope Francis was so abundant in all the sentences, in all the statements, in all the teachings that we got a lot of material to be reflected upon and to start with in our reflection. And the pretext, well, we started in 2017 a good cooperation with the Talitacum group. Talitacum is a network of Catholic sisters uh, gathered under the umbrella of the Union of Superior General based in Rome here, and they are trying to join a fort in order to combat human trafficking, to protect victims, to prevent human trafficking, to prosecute as much, as, and to partner with other organizations in order to be more effective in their work. For us, it was compulsory to start working with them simply because they were doing a wonderful job. And then we have a consultation with Catholic partners in February 2018. We call all those who are working on, with, uh, with human trafficking issues and to come to Rome and to enlighten us about the issue. Well, it came up a good document with a few challenges, with, which was uh, double-checked with the selected bishop conferences in July 2018. We invited bishops to come around 60 they came to Rome representing 60 bishop conferences, around the 200 around the world, and they were uh, helping us to better understand the challenges and to translate the challenges into pastoral responses. And then we have intensive work of editing of whatever was collected with different people. We want also to have original in English, so we work a lot in the English. And, and whenever you're referring to the past orientation, I'd like to say that is the mother document. Mm -hmm. So you go to the English. But we have so far around, I think, 24, 25 translation of the document. So we are very pleased to see. Now the text of the document. The title, Pastoral Orientation. It was decided simply because we, we are not intended to give any instruction. It is not a declaration of intent. It is actually an, a document giving clear uh, orientations on the pastoral side and the pastoral field for those who are Catholic agents, Catholic actors who are willing to work. You can call them recommendation if you want, but uh, they are just uh, uh, indication of common path that we are just saying. An introduction was inspired by the speech of Pope Francis on 12 February 2018. He was calling for more cooperation among the actors, and this is why we insisted on cooperation. And then we tackle first the main issue, which is the definition of human trafficking. And here we have a, an important issue, simply because we are normally uh, referring to the definition provided by the Palermo Convention and, uh, and the Protocol on Human Trafficking, but if we look at the Palermo Convention, it was inserted in the context of international organized, internationally organized crime. It was talking about an international human trafficking mm -hmm. perpetrated by criminals organized among themselves. Today, we are assisting to many other forms of the human trafficking, even fathers and mothers selling their children and uh, for exploitation in different areas. So we have to think about a different idea of human trafficking and we ex expanded the idea with a new definition which is just taking a person from a safe place to an unsafe place 
to exploit the person, to abuse the person, uh, to use a person as an object. Yeah. So it is, a, I would say, a wider definition. Yeah. Now we have, a, 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 in all the chapters, a reality, a responses a paradigm which is presented. So presenting a reality, giving responses. And then we conclude with a, a call for partnership mm -hmm. at the same time, so also a prayer. And it is very interesting because in the reality of responses, what we see, next please, what we see in reality responded, the first thing that we, we uh, it is, the first thing that we had to underline is understanding human trafficking. Why? Because unfortunately, a uh, few people really know everything about human trafficking. They may know about the word, but what is exactly human trafficking? The causes of human trafficking? How human trafficking is developed? I would say that this is something that we have to understand. It is coming from an idea of commodification of people, person, and exploitation of brothers and sisters. And we have to highlight that on the bottom line, there is always a demand aspect we should be. If there are people abused, if there are people exploited, it's because there is a need of the result of such exploitation. To be very concrete, there will be no people trafficked if there is nobody on the other end willing to get services from the people traffic. Mm. So we have to tackle the demand aspect and mm. see how we can decrease or eradicate totally the demand. Acknowledging human trafficking is very important. Also, uh, recognizing that this phenomenon is existing. And we notice that there is a reluctance to acknowledge human trafficking on the part of institutions. It's not very nice to say we have human trafficking in our territory. And on the other side of non-human trafficking, even from the victims, it is very difficult to know that they are victims of human trafficking. And then the identification of phenomenon and reporting human trafficking is, is very difficult simply because there is a lot of violence and criminal activity entailed in human trafficking. So there is fear for any kind of reaction by those who are just uh, doing the traffickers, doing human trafficking. The dynamics of human trafficking, this is a, a, a clear business connection, and this is what we wanted to highlight. Now, it is quite clear if you want to have cheaper things, you have to reduce the cost of production, and the cost of production can be reduced only in reducing the cost of empower, of human power. So the cost of labor is going to be reduced. So the way is exploitation of workers. This is just a one. So the business connection is to be tackled. Things should be paid exactly the value of the work entailed in order to produce them. Working condition and supply chains to be responsible of the working condition of the workers, which is also, they are elements of human trafficking at the end, or the supply chains where responsibility seems to be just uh, lost somewhere and we have to reconnect the supply chains and give it to each one's responsibility. And then the link between human smuggling and human trafficking. This is exactly what was highlighted in our documents simply because we have two different protocols in the Paramo Convention and that we are making a clear difference. Okay. It is true, there is a huge difference between human smuggling and human trafficking. But honestly speaking today, there is a lot of human smuggling ending in human trafficking. Whenever abuse and exploitation is entering into a trip that I pay, I paid, but at the end of the day, I find myself trafficked. Let's go on with the reality of responses. And we have this kind of uh, dialectic that we have. And understanding that uh, there is the response of human trafficking, there is a lot of room for improvement. They are responses. They are, I would say, very good responses somewhere, but we need to boost, to boost the cooperation. Mm -hmm. And to boost uh, cooperation is one of the mantra that we are saying. A lot of actors work working, but they have to work together. We have to provide support to survivors, and we have to promote the reintegration of those who are either willing to go back mm -hmm. or just to be integrated in the place where they were trafficked. And this is one of the important, important points of reflection where reintegration is also at stake. What is the methodology that is to be used? It is three steps. The challenges from reality, the commitment of all actors, and the commitment of Catholics. And we're in the documents, you will find clearly stated the three points. 
let's go on next we did a launching in the in Sala Stampa Vaticana uh, at the end of the document, beginning of 2019, with a huge presence of the press. They were really interested about the document that we were producing. And we decided to send a copy of the document to all relevant Catholic partners, practically to all bishops around the world, to all religious congregations, and to all. And it was done, uh, I would say, uh, digitally, because we produced PDF and we send a link to our PDF everywhere. We made publicity on the website and social media. We have a specific campaign on engaged human trafficking, and we publish, we publicized also the document. And then we decided to have an international conference in April 2018 with main Catholic partners, which is exactly the second point that I would like to tackle very briefly. Uh, we decided to have a, a, a conference simply because we noticed that there was a lot of interest and everybody was saying, how can we translate the document into practice? I say, we are not the ones saying that. You come, you share your insights together and you come up with very concrete recommendations. So we have three days, a three days conference. We, are, uh, we divided the uh, 200, 200 participants in 10 tables of 20 people each. And they were discussing for the three days with just some inputs coming from the center, but most of the time was spent among practitioners, do, telling to each other what they were doing and what can be done all together. It was very interesting. The first session was dedicated to human trafficking in the context of sexual exploitation. The second, human trafficking in the context of slave labor. In the first section, human trafficking and human smuggling. The fourth is other forms of human trafficking, and it is quite interesting to notice that there are always new forms of human trafficking. And then identification, identification, prevention, and prosecution of human trafficking. Six, protection of survivor, and seven, partnership and responding to human trafficking. This was a wonderful work done by all the participants, and they were putting together their insights. Can you imagine that at the end of the three days, we came up with six 195 concrete pro proposals, concrete proposal. We have to do this, this, and this, and this. <laughs> Overwhelming result. Yeah. And they were elaborating the, in the seventh session. Now we ask them to say, now vote the proposal by priority. And 42 proposals were identified as priority. And they became in the conference a commitment for all actors represented. We are going to prioritize these 42 recommendations. They are in what, our website. You can download them, the, all the proposal, and see what are the recommendations which are just here. The website, which is uh, uh, was presented at the real beginning of our www.migrantsrefugeesection.da. Uh, so there you will find everything. And one of the tables were fully devoted in communication because we understood that what is not communicated today is not existing. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to communicate our concern, what is the issue, what are the issues of human trafficking, and it's very interesting. For each of the recommendations, for each of the, of the specific seven sessions, there is one recommendation on, on communication. Very interesting. And then we ended with the audience with the Holy Father. You can see a picture there of our audience with the Holy Father. Mm -hmm. The 200 representatives were received and we got a wonderful message of the Holy Father just uh, uh, inviting us to be more proactive in the work and to cooperate more. So it was very wonderful and I think we went on. I will go just with the third point, just opening the dialogue and opening then the uh, reflection of Andrea, which is just following, mm -hmm. about what happened during COVID-19. Because... As soon as we started with our work in implementing 2020, we immediately entered into the pandemic crisis. We thought that human trafficking was to be affected by the pandemic crisis. Instead, human trafficking has been quite resilient during the pandemic crisis. And even while spreading more, using a new word, which is quite hidden and quite secret, which is the digital word. Because uh, most of this world is not controlled. Mm. There is, the regulation is still lacking. And this is why we try to understand how human trafficking can be identified and then eventually prevented and prosecuted 
uh, in the digital world. But since this will be quite well explained by the next speaker, I will just say uh, that uh, we produce a thematic note, uh, which is just uh, telling us about the responsibility of institution, responsibility of the private sector, the awareness and education of the users. And this thematic note has been given to all the, uh, the, mm, go, the representative of the states and the diplomatic court, corp accredited to the your Holy See. I would like just to finish with a quote uh, by Bob, um, Bob Francis, that it was uh, uh, just uh, telling us uh, how we can go on and work. Much has been done and is being done, yet much remains to be done. To make its action more adequate and effective, the Church should welcome the help of other political and social actors. Engagement in structured collaborations with public institutions and civil society organizations will guarantee more effective and longer lasting results. Pope Francis. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Father Baggio. Indeed, very convincing, very clear, and actually, even if those pastoral orientations are now three years old, uh, I think uh, we can still learn a lot, and also we can um, implement a lot of recommendations. And indeed, I want to tell you that uh, this afternoon I had a meeting with the Grand uh, Chancellor of the Order of Malta, the new Grand Chancellor, uh, and he told me, you know, I'm ready to consider uh, more action from the Order of Malta. And I'm pretty sure that we will have a second look at those uh, uh, pastoral orientations. And uh, definitely, <laughs> we want to keep in touch with you uh, to draw all the lessons of those very interesting uh, consultations and of, of this publication. And definitely, uh, now I'm looking forward also to hear what uh, Andrea Marchesani has to tell us. Andrea, you have to go. So, uh, good evening to everyone. Thanks, Michel. Thank you, uh, Adjo, uh, for this opportunity. I, I will I will go in a journey between the Laudato Si, the Catholic social teaching, and with a small parenthesis on the human trafficking in the digital world, as Father Adjo said just a few minutes ago. So, as you can see in my first slide, you can see that there are many formal public declaration of the popes and also in the bible in the old and the new testament we can find some uh, declaration and some uh, sentences on human trafficking so we can start from the from the bible from the prophet isaiah to saint paul and arriving also in the in 500 600 years ago where the pope the pope say already that all the people were capable of faith and so of, and salvation also they were speaking about the human dignity and this papal declaration were excommunicating slavers and traffickers. Uh, after in, in, in the recent days we had uh, John, Pope John Paul II defining a shocking offense of Pope Benedict the scourge of trafficking and Pope Francis many times he focused on, on human trafficking as a Consequence of of the system of self of self of the of this economic system and society. So uh, speaking about the, the the Catholic social teaching, what was the Catholic social teaching is is to bring salvation and freedom to temporal realities. And so I think that this fits human trafficking perfectly, and because if we can take um, to as example, Christ, we have his incarnation in a real family, in a historic society, and we have his public life where he was preaching. So the faith is not a private, it doesn't stay in a private dimension, but regards all the dimension, the social and political dimension and economic dimension of, of, of the human being. And so from this public speaking, Reach of Christ, you can do the second slide where you go, you can see the Tintoretto mm -hmm. uh, painting of 
Christ preaching to the multitudes, um, where we can analyze what the Catholic social teaching tell us about, uh, about what is the man and what is the dignity of man. And so the, 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 the Catholic social teaching is the, was called before the Christian philosophy by Pope Leo the 13th. And so it's, it's set in the, in the Bible, in the gospel. And we can go to Genesis where the man is created as an, an image of God, Imago Dei. And from here we have the human dignity that's unviolable and the transcendency of the natural moral norm. So what is the good, the bonum for the man is the, the integral fulfillment and his dignity. And from this, let's call it bon, the bonum, we have the social dimension of this, uh, of this, uh, of this bonum that is the common good. And the common good, as St. Thomas uh, tells us, is of everyone and each person. So it's indivis indivisible and is for everyone and is a relation. So uh, refers to the to the uh, political and the social life of men. So if there is a private, a moral good, there is a this, there is a social and uh, a social dimension of this moral good. And this is the connect to the integral human development where. The dignity of every man is respected in every context. So the political, the economic, the social. Uh, so uh, the, the this Christian philosophy, the the Catholic social teaching, is uh, uh, was uh, inaugurated by Pope Leo, and it, it tries to solve uh, to bring that uh, salvation in the temporal realities in every different uh, time from different popes. So we have different, uh, we have the ma social uh, magisterium that are the in encyclical letters and the documents of the pope that are focused on the social uh, issues and interpreting them with, uh, with the theological dimension, with the gospel. So among these, uh, we have many of these were for, for labors at the beginning. And after uh, there is a, of course, there is an evolution, uh, like like the the new challenges in the social in the society. So among these, there is the Laudato Si, that is the theme of today. And as you can see, this is the Laudato Si, and I chose to use the 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 Sistine Chapel paintings to 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 explore Laudato Si. So the three main uh, the most famous, so the creation of Adam, the creation of Eva, and the original sin. So I will do that with a little bit of artistic license, because I will start from the central point that is the creation of, of Eve with, with Adam uh, just next to her. And we, we see that uh, in the, cre the creation is a, in the creation, Adam and Eve are put in the garden are placed in the garden together, and there is a relation between God, the human being, uh, the two of them, and the creation. So, uh, as in Genesis, we read, it's not the good, it's not good for the man to be alone, and they are placed in the garden to cultivate and care, not to dominate, just to dominate the garden. So, Laudato Si tells us that it's not just an ecological, but it's an integral, syncretical, because it, it, it tells us about these relations between God, the human being, and the creation. So, uh, as we will see later with the, with the, with our, with the issue of human trafficking, we start with the, the, the possession and the use and abuse of other people, and it all starts when the, the human being tries to be like the God, uh, and from the humility that is preached in the Laudato Si by, by Pope Francis, we have the pride. So uh, from this pride and the try to be to get the knowledge of God, and that we can call it the, the techniques to to possess the environment, to possess other people, we have the original sin. That is always a social sin because every sin has an implication and an influence for on the life of other people. 
and here we have the 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 god uh, the, the the human being that believes to be like god and to not have limits and to possess the creation and from here we have the economy and the culture of waste uh, so and in Laudato Si, Pope Francis uh, guides us in a in a in a in a journey from this from the original sin to the relativism, because as the man declares the independence from reality and to be the uh, the the new lord of creation, uh, we start he starts to be to think of himself and herself at the center and. So the new priority is not in that relation we talked before, but is the is convenience, the priority of these uh, pleasures, and everything and everyone and the environment and the creation and other people became relative. So from this we have uh, we have human trafficking comes from this, and when someone takes advantage of another and there is the commodification that Father Baggio uh, told us before, the commodification as commodification as we use other people as objects for many kind of trafficking like sexual exploitation, organ trafficking, uh, and this and uh, slave labels of many forms. So uh, from this communication that this commodification and exploitation uh, violates the dignity of the Imago Dei we talked before. And if we have, uh, if slavery always exists in the history, today we have a different dimension with the technology and with the, the new philosophy, the new philosophical revolutions of the modernity, where there is a very strong anthrop anthropocentrism. And the technologic uh, development is huge and many times not controlled and there are no limits. And the Pope tells us about the globalization of the technocratic paradigm, where the relativism that we, we, we the relativism of before is in, con in conjunction with this technocratic paradigm and brings uh, that uh, use of other people or of the creation as mere object to be more stronger and stronger, like in the in the digital world, where the technological means brings not just to the abuse, but to spread that abuse being filmed uh, to be around the world. So the victim is not just abused the first time where the where the movie that on internet was was uh, shot, but also many times in many places, also later. Um, in the, in this context of the digital world, we and connected also to the pandemic, we have the lockdown phenomenon. Just to be brief and to make some example, where many many victims were in lockdown with their abusers, perpetrators, and traffickers, and uh, but not only in that may, may be difficult. Uh, situation environments, but also the human trafficking arrived also in our homes because uh, with this technological means that is very difficult to, to track to be tracked down by police force. Uh, people were uh, were uh, were con many times people very young people or people in, with many problems, or difficult issues. They were in contact in their house uh, with the with the with the internet, so with the social media that every one of us used, and uh, maybe they were found through the the, the social media of other people, maybe uh, siblings or, or the parents or other relatives. So uh, the, this technology means a, a huge power and uh, an escalation. Of, of the phenomenon, because there is no need just to, there is no need only to traffic, but there is the, you can sell that abuse and that, uh, and, the, and the trafficking over many times uh, in many places. So uh, to arrive to, uh, 
to what is the new paradigm to mm-hmm. what we can do to solve this and to to fight and so uh, is what uh, Pope Francis invite us to uh, to to do is to to stop to see and appreciate beauty and not to be possessed by the the, the dynamics and the rhythms of this uh, of this world so we are called to an integral conversion and an integral conversion means to 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 encounter as Pope Francis told us in order to see to to encounter Jesus Christ and to re-enter in that relations that allow us to see uh, to allow to allows us to see and have compassion of others um, so uh, and we were talking about before about pride and here in this part of Lauda to see we have we, Pope Francis talks about humility so the, the opposite where we we live behind our ego and we re-enter in that uh, relations so this is the, the, the from the, the creation of if and the and the and the original scene in the sixteenth chapter here we have the creation of, of Adam where uh, these the two ends means the, the to get back into in that relationship that is destroyed by our uh, ego or by our by our selfishness so and uh, without here the Pope tells us a very important thing that the relations with God, the, the relation is like always cannot be an element of this relation cannot be left outside, like the creation, the, the creator, and the creatures. Uh, so they have always to be together. Otherwise, uh, uh, a relation without one of these these three elements is not is not the the, the the relations that God had in mind at the beginning, and it, it becomes something else, something uh, many times ideological. So uh, this going back in the relations, this conversion brings us to the economy of care. Uh, so where uh, we the man re- recognize. The, that is not autonomous as master of other people and of creation and just go back in that relation of in the, in the, in the interdependence that that brings us to a common project and the care for our common home and for the brothers and sisters so to as we said before to cultivate as the genesis say to cultivate and care the creation uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Andrea, for this very substantial intervention and your insights on the social teaching of the Catholic Church in order to see. Indeed, <laughs> unfortunately, quite often the destruction of the environment is linked to human trafficking, to forced labor or slave labor. And uh, uh, of course, if you don't respect human dignity, uh, you have even less reason to respect nature. So uh, it, it, it's linked. And uh, uh, I don't know whether we have uh, uh, questions. I would like to open the discussion. Uh, still, could we see whether there are questions? I see that uh, Brenna Wallace has uh, questions. Uh, uh, I think there is we have q and Nope. Oh, thank you very much for your kind uh, comments. Uh, and uh, Agnes Fiducia, traffickers or abusers are using app. We use every day to find new people to exploit. That's sure, unfortunately. And Agnese, mm-hmm. also you say, I agree, Father Baggio, but uh, I can talk about uh, the clothes production because the biggest names of fashion don't care about slavery. Okay, we don't have to make a blanket condemnation, but uh, uh, their products are too expensive and are made by slaves. Okay, it could be the case. I don't want to, uh, again, 
condemn everyone in, in one uh, way. Uh, and yes, and everything. But still, I think, uh, Father Badiou, you clearly uh, have a few things to say. Thank you. No, no. Uh, I, I, I think that Agnes is um, is pointing out one of the good things that we should be very careful of. Um, we we receive many reports about uh, the action that Agnese is uh, just pointing out. Yes. So not necessarily uh, um, the slave labor is just performed by small firms lost somewhere in the world. There are also big firms doing this is one of the sectors which is unfortunately is quite full of this kind of episodes. And uh, we know for sure that some of them have even recognized publicly that in the supply chain they were using slave labor somehow. It was very interesting because during our exercise at the conference in Sacrofano, many of the actors on the field they were talking about this issue and there was a proposal just going around. It's one of the many proposals that I just mentioned. It was just to use a label for products and say uh, slave labor free. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it was very interesting because when we proposed it in a group of ambassadors, Mm -hmm. uh, those are credit to the Holy See. Many of them came back to me and said, Father, we should push this idea. It mm -hmm. was just before COVID. And unfortunately, when COVID came in, uh, we, we didn't have chance to meet again and to do all the things. But it's one of the things that we can raise up again and say, how can we implement the standard where from the first worker on the supply chain up to the seller at the end, we are sure that no slave labor is in pain. Mm. And just to respond, if I'm, I'm going to buy a product today, I'm not quoting the shop, but it is everything for one dollar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going there and buying things. And I know that that particular item cannot cost one dollar. Just because if labor is mm -hmm. entailed, it should cost more. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to the market and I'm buying a tomato, Mm. And I'm buying 24 cents. Mm. And I know that tomato would cost more than that. I can be quite sure that some kind of a cheap labor, if not slave labor, mm -hmm. it is entailed. And this is like an alarm, is a warning, uh, which is just telling us how careful we should, should be. But I would ask also to change the thing and say, what is also my responsibility? When I'm about to buy something, and when exactly, I'm not talking about the big firms that they are exploiting, exploiting. Mm -hmm. of course, they are, uh, they are big uh, uh, trends and, um, and uh, all the, 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 the uh, uh, their name, no, all aside. I'm thinking about, I mean, the normal goods that we are buying and say that our choice should go to those who are really, for sure, free of slave labor. No, I completely agree with you, and I, I think we we should uh, we should work on this. Uh, I don't have the, an instant solution now, uh, but also Pope Francis once said, uh, "Consumers make every day moral choices," meaning that it's not only to buy something or to consume to be a consumer, but also you have a moral choice to know what you are buying and uh, how you, uh, what kind of consumer you are. But you have something to say. Yeah. I was going to say the same thing, quoting also the Caritas in Veritate Encyclica of Pope yeah. Benedict, that yeah. say that purchase is always a moral act. So purchasing something is always a moral act where you are, mm -hmm. you are taking your responsibility on it. No, but that's good. Allow me also to, to add to the discussion, since we didn't tackle it before, but even the fishing industry, you know, it mm -hmm. is quite sensible to the issue of human trafficking. And we invited the Apostleship of the Sea uh, mm -hmm. to be part of our discussion in Sacrofano. And they quoted a lot, a lot of examples, which are just uh, ongoing in some areas of the world, and even the cost of the fish that is ending up on our table of the tuna, on mm. other things, can just make us think mm. on a kind of labor is entailed in order to get that fish on your table. Yeah. No, no, I agree. And even, you know, in my country, there were also questions about, uh, you know, uh, children working 
in cocoa plantations in Africa and saying, oh, should we ask uh, Nestle and other co chocolate companies, uh, uh, do they care about uh, the working conditions in uh, those cocoa plantations? Uh, and uh, indeed, indeed, uh, you, you can always ask questions. And uh, to, to receive answers could be possibly more difficult, but still asking questions, time after time, people will begin to, uh, to react, to think, and possibly to help you to, to say, yes, we are actually uh, uh, having a social uh, responsibility as cooperation, you know. So, but uh, still, even, uh, even this is the beginning of something, but uh, we need to mobilize public conscience and to mobilize consumers and, of course, to mobilize also industry and, and then possibly also to, to mobilize. And, and there I would like to, to quote uh, a friend from uh, Australia. If, if John McCarthy, he, he, he is a member of the Australian uh, Association of the uh, of Malta, and uh, he is a legal advisor to the Archbishop of Sydney. And actually, he convinced the Archbishop of Sydney to monitor the supply chains of the Archdiocese of Sydney. And then he decided also to ask other Australian Catholic organizations to do the same. And now they have what they call ACAN, uh, an association of Catholic organizations taking care of their social responsibilities. Because they realize, be it uh, bishops, schools, parishes, hospitals, they have a large power of buying or not buying and precisely putting pressure on uh, business, putting pressures on uh, uh, importers and putting pressure actually in order to keep actually working conditions fair. Another thing also to say, and I remember once discussing in New York with a businessman, you know, I said, but you know, I completely agree with you. I'm against slave labor because it's unfair competition for me. I said, okay, why not? <laughs> why not, you know? And you will find also people in unions saying, you know, I don't want to be... <laughs> <laughs> to have also competition from slave workers in this country or in, in other countries. So that's why unions, trade unions, could be also supporting the rights of workers in other countries. And if we find a synergy between various, you know, interests, but of course beginning with the uh, our own uh, ethics, I think we, we, we might achieve something. We, 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 we need to have a coalition of like-minded organizations, be it within the church, within other religious communities, business, again, trade unions, uh, possibly media, consumers, uh, also organizations dealing with the protection of the environment, and possibly, with all of this, uh, we could uh, begin to achieve something. Wonderful. No? But no, we have more questions because I can't uh, is there, No. Wait, wait. Is there, are, there, are there questions we could uh, answer? Oh, wait a minute. Uh, the chat. How far can we? Oh, yes. Uh, obviously, someone is asking uh, 
definitely we need a true conversion, meaning a true evangelical conversion, of course, uh, uh, and then possibly also a Muslim or Buddhist uh, or even uh, other religions could think of uh, addressing this moral issue on their own way. Uh, and definitely, it's not only an economical uh, question, it's definitely a moral, a moral issue, yes. Yes. Yeah. I would like also to take this chance, since it is mentioned also in the question, and Andrea mentioned it in, in the presentation, of the interconnection of the phenomena that we are assisting to during this time. Yeah. We are just coming out from a pandemic crisis. We mentioned about the link with the pandemic crisis and also digital world and human trafficking. But there are other phenomena were just uh, very uh, worrisome during today. But assisting to a climate crisis, the climate crisis is going to produce more displacement. More displacement, it means also more would be victims of human trafficking simply because most of the area interested on, uh, on our climate crisis really gravely affected by, you know, by climate crisis are those who are less checked and monitored. Mm -hmm. And where there is a little monitoring, it is where human trafficking is also. But also climate crisis is connected with conflicts because, you know, when you're just uh, mo moving from one place to another place looking for food and then you think about the conflicts which are, can be just raised well, um, and conflicts probably would produce more displacement mm. and conflicts would produce more possible victims of uh, human trafficking. Uh, just, uh, just thinking about what happened, the last conflict, the latest conflict, conflict we are assisting at is the one in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And one of the main worries that we had as Catholic looking at this phenomena Catholic uh, practitioners, Catholic actors, and we'll gather here around exactly this table. We are just around was exactly human trafficking, which is highly perpetrated in the borders or even within Ukraine, mm -hmm. taking advantage of the ignorance and goodwill of the people just to get, get protected and getting away from very risky and, uh, and dangerous areas. And we know, we know that there was a lot of human trafficking done during this time. We, we got reports and we invited all our partners, the Catholic partners, to be very attentive. Mm -hmm. I know that the Old of Malta has been very attentive of this mm -hmm. and on what was happening at the border, informing people, because this is also the prevention is done through a real information of people and, and then trying to observe because this is another thing that we should do, you know, keep on observing and monitoring our reality because uh, we should detect when something wrong it is done on the part of human trafficking. So looking at the scenario, I would say that there are a, a serious possibility to have a huge increase of human trafficking in the forthcoming years. This is telling us how urgent is the action against, mm -hmm. uh, is the action against human trafficking. No, I, I completely agree, and I think we should use every opportunity. And for example, on the 18th of October, there is this European Day against human trafficking. And what I would like to say is that the European Day is not only for Europe, because we have this Council of Europe uh, 2005 Convention against human trafficking, which is open to non-member states of uh, the Council of Europe, and which is uh, implemented in a very interesting way uh, with a group of experts on human trafficking, Greta. And, and then definitely uh, this could uh, be uh, used by uh, many European governments, also non-European governments, as an example. So that's the 18th of October. So that could be also a way uh, to address public opinion in Europe about uh, uh, not only Ukraine, but also all those victims in all our countries. Then we have uh, the 2nd of December, which is uh, International Day Against Day. And again, on the 2nd of December 2014, we had this interreligious appeal to end modern slavery, launched by Pope Francis with the Archbishop of Canterbury, with uh, uh, 
actually Protestant, Orthodox, uh, Buddhist, Jewish, Muslim, uh, spiritual leaders. And I think it is, we, we have to mobilize spiritual leaders uh, because they can have definitely a good influence, a good influence everywhere, uh, and, and possibly more outside of Europe than in Europe. Hmm? Uh, then we have the 8th of February, and the 8th of February okay. is Saint Bakita. And Saint Bakita is not only a Catholic saint, but it's a religious from the Sudan, and she was adopted by uh, an Italian family, so she became uh, a Catholic nun, and, and then uh, helped many victims of human poverty. And I would say, I would like to pay homage to uh, St. Paquita, to so many religious congregations who are help, helping victims and survivors. And, and actually, we should help also all those congregations because quite often people don't realize that uh, helping victims and survivors need, needs training, but also needs time and dedication. Because a victim of human trafficking can take years to recover from uh, uh, slavery, sure. from uh, uh, trans trauma. Oh, Hadija. Uh, yes, I, I know. Is that a friend from Morocco? Uh, Hadija, thank you very much for being with us. Could you develop on women, migrants, and human trafficking, which impact on security? Wow. <laughs> This is a very, uh, I would say, a very interesting question because uh, we are dealing with uh, um, a lot of women who decide just to leave their country and to entertain this, uh, uh, we call them the, this uh, travel of hope and looking for a greener pasture as well. And I say that the women are more and more present along these routes. And I would say, unfortunately, sometimes simply because they are still men were thinking to take advantage of the women on, uh, on, on the route. And we are receiving them many times at the end of the route, and they are really uh, telling us about exploitation and abuses uh, that they have been victim of during the trips. And so allow me also to say what kind of attention should be done at, the, at departure and transit areas. We think sometimes that we are just assisting to the phenomenon at the end. When they are just arriving, maybe or by boat or by walking, they are just arriving to the countries, to the countries of arrival. But actually, the phenomenon started in the village, where recruiters are going there. They are selling dreams to them, telling them that everything will be solved, that it will be very easy. In a few days, you're going to get a wonderful job in one of the G20 countries, probably, and probably with a, a future, a wonderful future for you. Mm. And Many of the women are just thinking about a new possibility for them, for their children, also to get uh, a better future for all of them. And just uh, starting the route many times alone. It's not only African, it's the same thing in Central America. It's been the same thing for Venezuelan migrants going around. And in Asia, it's exactly the same. So we notice that in most of the part, as, as well in Ukraine has been so far with a huge discussion about majority being women and children, those living in the country. Mm -hmm. So there is a huge understanding of and about the vulnerability, mm -hmm. which is done from the recruitment, from the, I would say, purchasing dreams at the real beginning. So the necessity of being really informed, fairly informed, or what is going on on the travel and the trip, about the risk of leaving their family and uh, just start a trip. And then to have safe places during the transit, mm. which is one of the most difficult things. We are requesting all the local churches in the transit countries to, to build up safe places, centers for information, but also for sheltering people mm. just going, and women particularly going along these routes. And then when uh, they are just uh, passing from one country to another country, crossing one border and crossing a second border, being sold from one trafficker to another trafficker, we are listening to stories which are very terrible, terrible. Because then, of course, no, any kind, any kind of abuse 
is entailed in this kind of a, a person is becoming an object mm. is sold from one person, from one trafficker to another trafficker. So women, children, entailed migration, we have also to think about unaccompanied minors. Yes. Many of them, many of them at becoming more and more sometimes sent because they know that they are going to enter a country in any way we are going to enter, but then with the risk which are entailed in in this kind of trips. This is why I said at the beginning that many many times human smuggling at the beginning is becoming human trafficking at the end, where you have plenty of people just knocking the door. And I would like also to add another situation, which is also a good, a fertile territory for traffickers, which is an irregular situation of women, a regular situation of men and young men, mm. particularly because we have to talk about all these kind of things for either sexual exploitation or slave labor, whenever a regularization is not possible. We, we had a call, and probably also you received the call that we made about a, a wider regularization process for those already reached the country of arrival, to give chances to regularize their position. It is also to prevent human trafficking, to prevent the modern slavery, mm -hmm. which is just uh, very frequent in these uh, areas of uh, gray areas of an uh, irregular situation when nobody's protecting you. Yeah. And you're just trying to hide yourself. Mm -hmm. You're not going to the police simply because you don't have a document, you know all the things that are just in the, in the regular situation. <clears throat> but you're right. But, but then also, we need people to be informed that in, in many countries, you have a, a humanitarian visa for victims of human trafficking. But of course, for this, you need to identify the victim. You need to convince the victim that actually it's possible for them. And uh, you need also, <laughs> after that, to convince uh, whoever, I may say, attorneys at law, police uh, officers, judges, that actually those people are indeed victims. And as you know, quite often victims uh, behave in a very uh, strange way. Uh, they, they are so, uh, I must say, so traumatized that uh, either they don't remember, or they don't dare to speak, or they... Uh, and people say, but what's happening here? You're telling me that this person is uh, is victim of slavery and she's not capable of uh, of speaking out? No, 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 be be because of psychological. Uh, yep. Yeah. So, no, I think that there is a lot to do. And thank you, Hatija, for this uh, very interesting question. Uh, but uh, I can tell you that uh, indeed you were right in, in in stressing that it's not only. Uh, <clears throat> women, but also boys, uh, who are also victims, and, uh, and men also, uh, slave labor, unfortunately, is existing in many countries, including in European countries, uh, and uh, that's why it's a huge task. But uh, the main word is human dignity, and to respect human dignity of every and, and, and actually, first it comes to human rights, but the human rights it, it quite often now is a kind of theoretical uh, concept. And we need to go back indeed to human dignity of uh, the human being as creation of God. And, uh, and this we find not only in the Catholic Church, but also in Christianity, also in Judaism, also in, in, in Islam, and I'm pretty sure other religions have that kind of, uh, of concept, and we could, uh, we could actually uh, uh, have the support of those uh, religious communities to, to say, okay, you know, it's, of course, it's a difficult situation, but there are very simple and fundamental things and we need to defend them because actually that's also for us, not only for, 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 for people who are not belonging to our families or not belonging to our countries, but also for every one of us. 
And uh, if we don't do that, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, I think our own societies are going in a very, very dangerous way. Uh, and, and that's really the decadence. But uh, uh, I don't know, is there any other question we should answer? Uh, it's, it's a, a thanks to Flaminia. Flaminia Vola is, a, yes. is, a, is an officer of yes. the Migrants Review Section, has been provided the recommendation that we yes. uh, elaborated yes. for all the Catholic organizations working on borders, yes. together with them in order to have uh, resources to, to fight against human trafficking. Yes. I would like to spend maybe the last word, I don't know about the time, no, if we have still more time. On prosecution, we didn't tackle much on prosecution. You mentioned about police and reporting to the police. This is one of the problems. First of all, the victims doesn't know to be a victim or doesn't want to recognize, to identify herself, himself as a victim. And this is one of the problems. But put the case that there is already recognition. I'm going to the police. I'm reporting a case. And that the investigation will start. Well, it takes normally very long to reach the end of investigation. And for all the time that the investigation is on, the victim is suffering again and again. Mm -hmm. Because he has to, to tell many times about the abuses mm -hmm. that he or she suffered. At the same time, it's also with a fear that some kind of reaction from mm -hmm. the victimizer would come. If you have a, a look, if you're interested to have some kind of numbers, you go to the I, TIP report, mm. which is produced every year. Yeah. The Trafficking Person Report, produced by the Department of State of the United States. I was using it during my previous life, you know, mm. when I, I was doing academic work, mm. and I was used to go every year and check. Mm. It was very interesting to see because there is a lot of recommendation, there is a lot of report, report a, a reality check, and cases produced. Mm. But when you go to prosecution, you will see that those prosecuted are so few. It's the number, <laughs> really, minimal number of people prosecuted. So it is impossible. When we talk about the numbers presented by ILO was about 50 million, no? Yeah. Five zero. Five zero, no? Yeah. 50 million. Well, for, to traffic 50 million, you should have hundreds of thousands of traffickers. <laughs> you have to think. But unfortunately, those are just maybe dozens or by tens, maybe, that they're just prosecuted every year. I think there is a, a huge work to be done on the part also of the institutions mm -hmm. and those who are in charge of prosecuting, because uh, we should have a, a very quick way. I can recall that when I was in the Philippines, I worked a lot on the untried trafficking law. Mm -hmm. And one of the issues was exactly that. How long will be the process, mm -hmm. the trial? How long, in how, how much time the person will be pros prosecuted? Because, mm -hmm. well, you know, there are many ways also to escape and maybe and to get away also of it. It is very important, I think, to produce more legislation on this mm -hmm. and also to instruct judges, mm -hmm. lawyers, prosecutors about the things because many a time, even policemen, I know yeah. that, yeah. well, the example of Santa Marta Group, I think, is, yes. is, a, is to be mentioned, no? Yes. Where yes. the cooperation church on one side, Anglican and Catholic church on one side, and on the other side, you have also the police, I think is uh, working together and producing a, a partnership which is very effective is one of the practice, good practices or best practices that can be presented. No, no, thank you, Ahmed. Yeah, just to mention that the really difficult situation that Father Bajo describes about the prosecution with this phenomenon now is even worse with the, with the human trafficking in the digital world because technology <laughs> gave the, the power, the capability to traffickers to, to, to enter in a, in a gray zone that is more gray than the normal one. Because with the, with the, with the systems in, in internet, you can buy, you can sell people and, and, and you don't need even to bring people in the street to, 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 to sell them. You can do that indoor and the, there are, there is a black market on the internet. There are uh, mm -hmm. zone where where zone of the internet where they cannot be tracked by police. So if is needed uh, a training and more prosecution in the let, let, let's call uh, the the not normal but the human trafficking the, the in in persons in person 
even more there is a need to 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 focus also on the on the digital one and also all the all the all the flux we we talked about before enter in this now that is much easier to to manage and to sell these services these 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 abuses these these lives through internet to to with the technology and as technology if you are more capable of the other side to use it the other side cannot track you so technological capabilities are a key to for prosecution and prevention as well thank you no no thank you very much and, 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 and that's why it's a new battlefield so to speak uh, battlefield not only for military people but also for uh, uh, protecting human dignity and uh, you see even in France now you have this uh, uh, exposure of uh, pornography and uh, and people saying oh but you know it, it's normal we no, no, wait a minute uh, it's it, it's not normal if you are dealing with minors and even it's not normal if you're abusing adults uh, so definitely uh, we need to have a new public conscience you have also a new a technological race between police and criminals yeah. and uh, uh, we need also to responsabilize I must say Google, Apple and other uh, uh, big uh, <laughs> technological corporations and to tell them but please yeah. uh, be more responsible, be accountable uh, to all those victims uh, who are uh, actually uh, attracted by wrong messages and uh, we need your cooperation also to combat human trafficking. But still, what I would like to say is that definitely we shall organize other webinars to discuss uh, approaches to develop practical and legal measures in order to prevent and combat trafficking in persons and uh, Already now, I want to invite you to uh, two upcoming webinars on the 7th of November at 6 p.m. on human trafficking and immigration and on the 29th of November at 6 p.m. also Central European time on forced labor and transparency of supply chains. <laughs> so I think uh, uh, 7th of November, 29th of November, and uh, uh, definitely you you will uh, in the next few days be able to not only to uh, watch the video recording of this webinar with uh, subtitles in seven languages, including Italian yeah. and French, but also uh, you will be able also to download uh, uh, the handouts and you will be able to register for those two webinars of the 7th and 29th of November. And uh, uh, I must say, I would like to thank uh, uh, all speakers. Thank you very much, Father Badiou and uh, Andrea Marchesani, uh, uh, to uh, this webinar, and also all participants, uh, all those who ask questions, all those who are, and uh, I'm happy to uh, recognize uh, Flaminia, Khadija, Agnese, and others. Uh, all those, uh, we are very happy. And also, excuse me, uh, my, my good friend from Giordano Monta, Ambassador Daniele Verga. I know he's very supportive of us, and uh, uh, we uh, are very happy to, um, to, to work together. And my special gratitude goes also to Yves Reichenbach, our webmaster, and to my assistants in Geneva, Clara Bregheri-Izepi, and Emanuele Giorgio Piduso. Uh, and as I told you, the video recording of this webinar will be available in a few days on our website, adlaudatosi.org. Uh, feel free to share the link. Uh, know also that uh, our English online course on human trafficking for helpers is now uh, translated and available not only in English, but also in French, and that uh, uh, an, an Italian and a German translation is now 
under construction, as we say. Uh, is, <laughs> it should be ready, hopefully, in the next uh, uh, few weeks. So, again, uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing you on the 7th of November and the 29th. Uh, and thanks and best wishes. And, and if you have good ideas how we could improve uh, uh, the <laughs> prevention uh, of uh, human trafficking, how we could improve the protection and rehabilitation of victims, uh, uh, we are always uh, happy to welcome them. Uh, and uh, uh, we, uh, as you see, we also <clears throat> are looking for uh, new partnerships. We are looking for uh, 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 training. We are looking for action. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Have a good day. Goodbye now.